Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Eric Candy. Here today on the channel we are back on PTCGO taking a look at some more team up decks. So for today we have the new Aerodactyl that we're finally going to be trying out here on the channel. This video was actually selected by one of our patrons, Chris Campbell, over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. So if you guys are unfamiliar with how our Patreon works, one of the perks uh, is depending on how much you pledge, you can actually choose video topics you want to see us cover. And Chris here wants to see Aerodactyl, so he finally got around to it, and that's what we have this show off today. So if you guys do want to learn more about how to have an even bigger say over the types of content we put out, while also helping support this channel in the process, I will have a link down below in the description for you guys to check out. But getting back to the deck that we're actually trying to show off here, this is Aerodactyl, but this is primarily a Malamar deck. A lot of this will look very familiar for anyone who's been playing Malamar in the past several months. A lot of standard stuff here. So uh, let's start with Aerodactyl and kind of show off some of the new stuff that we have. So Aerodactyl is a stage one colorless Pokemon, lightning weak, fighting resistance, when retreat cost. And we're really just looking at for this attack fossil fangs. So if you don't have any Pokemon GX or EX on your bench, this attack is 90 plus 90 more so pretty nice solid just consistent 180 turn after turn uh, of course if you have a choice band you can also do 210 which is pretty nice as well so that means we can pretty consistently knock out most of the basic gx's and stage one gx's uh, that are going to be in the game here uh, we do have some other damage modifiers if we do need to hit higher than that but generally speaking we're trying to just kind of blow through basics and stage one gx's with this card now of course one of the big downsides to this card though is the fact that it does take three energy this was just a double color synergy based attack this would be pretty insane uh but as a result, we do have to run some type of energy acceleration here with Aerodactyl. So of course, as you can see, we've chosen Malamar to be our partner here. So Malamar, of course, has that Psychic Recharge ability. We can accelerate a Psychic Energy from our discard pile to one of our bench Pokemon. And if you guys will notice, we actually play kind of a thinner line of Malamar in this deck as opposed to something like Ultra Necrozma or the standard like Psychic Malamar variants. Just because Aerodactyl doesn't discard energy, it only needs one single Psychic Energy in addition to its double colorless. So we just don't need quite as many of these uh, Malamars as most other variants are going to. So that is pretty nice that we don't need quite as many because Aerodactyl takes up a bunch of deck space. Malamar takes up a, up a bunch of deck space. So it's kind of nice we are able to cut a few slots there to ensure that we can make room for everything as well. So that's the general engine of how Aerodactyl is going to be streamed throughout the course of the game. We do have some other supporting uh, Pokemon in the deck, though. We have one copy of Giratina. This is going to be kind of a backup attacker, and also, of course, Distortion Door can potentially set up some knockouts for us as well. So, of course, uh, once during a turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is in your discard, you may put it onto your bench and put one damage counter on two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So, of course, this can be nice as setting up certain knockouts throughout the course of game. You know, if you're going at something like a Zera or a GX, sometimes that one damage counter is going to be enough to matter in terms of, you know, needing choice band or something like that. So, uh, the, the damage from Giratina can matter in certain situations, but it's also just a generally decent back attacker that you always have access to throughout the course of the game. We also have one copy of Ditto Prism Star. This is, of course, going to give us some flexibility in terms of who we want to evolve into. We can evolve into Malamar or, of course, Aerodactyl. And one thing that is really good about Ditto Prism Star in particular in this deck is the fact that it's Ultra Ball Searchable. And I know that seems like kind of a weird thing to praise, but we do have to remember Aerodactyl does come from the Unidentified Fossil card, which cannot be searched out by traditional like ball search cards. So being able to have this like alternate basic that can be searched out more easily is actually, I think, really important here. So uh, Ditto, obviously a fantastic card that is definitely proven its worth at this point in the game. Uh, we also have three copies of Jirachi, the new one from uh, Team Up. Debatably, I think the best card in the whole set if i have to be honest and that's gonna be for this stellar wish ability so if this is your active pokemon you may look at the top five cards of your deck pick a trainer card you find there then jirachi is going to be asleep so this is really nice because we can not only grab things like acrobikes and ultra balls and you know cynthia's or whatever we might need but also this is another way we can search out unidentified fossil uh like i said we can't with our ball card so this is a great way at finding those Aerodactyl evolution pieces throughout the course of a game. So Jirachi, definitely a fantastic card here. 
And then we also have just one copy of Mars Shadow. Of course, we play no copies of Tapalewe GX here just because we you know, need to fulfill that requirement on Aerodactyl's attack by having no GXs in play. But nevertheless, Let Loose is still a solid ability that can bail us out of a dead hand sometimes. So I definitely want to include some sort of card like that nevertheless. So that's going to be it for the Pokemon line, guys. Going on to the supporters, before we get too deep into it, I do want to quickly point out uh, the battles from this video were actually recorded prior to the recent International Championship. And uh, the reason I want to point that out is because the results of that probably would influence how I would build this going forward. We saw Absol popped up as an incredibly popular tech for you know those Jirachis to kind of slow them down. So going forward, if you guys do want to build this and try this out, I do think it will be important to change a few things around to incorporate some traditional switching cards like Switch or Escape Rope instead of purely relying on a skateboard. So something I definitely wanted to quickly point out before we continue this deck profile. But taking a look at what we have here, a lot of this is really standard stuff, Cynthia's, Lily's, uh, Ultra Balls, Mysterious Treasures. You can see we're running kind of a heavier count of Ultra Ball and Treasure. Just because unlike other Malamar decks, we need to actually search out a lot of non-psychic Pokemon, Aerodactyl, Ditto, Jirachi, whereas Mysterious Treasure can basically only search out our Malamar line, and then a couple of, you know, other supporting Pokemon. It only searches out about half of this deck. So uh, that's why we are going to be leaning heavier on Ultra Ball here. Uh, we still have a couple copies of Acrobike as well to dig a little deeper on certain turns as well. Uh, we can also put Energies in the discard pile this way, which is pretty nice. We have four unidentified fossils. Of course, this is what we need to get our air dactyls up and running. So you can play it as a 60 HP basic. And at any time during your turn, before you attack, you may discard this card from play and it can't retreat. So this is how we're gonna get air dactyls in play. And of course, just wanna quickly point out, if you guys did not know already, you cannot start this uh, just because it is an item while it's in your hand. So you do have to find this throughout the course of the game. You can't start with an unidentified fossil on your first turn. And then we have one fossil excavation map as well. This is not only a form of recovery for our fossils, but it's effectively like a fifth unidentified fossil because it does allow us the flexibility of searching one of our fossils out of our deck as well. So we're playing one copy of this. Let's see, three skateboards, like I mentioned, just to give those Jirachis free retreat and allow them to retreat when they're asleep. But like I said, I do think this card is important, but I think you should probably play some copies of normal switching cards in addition to this going forward. And then from there, two copies of Choice Band as well to hit that magic 210 number to knock out things like Zorark GX and other stage one GXs. And then from there, I think the last of our trainer cards are gonna be some stadiums. Of course we have one copy of Viridian Forest to search energy out of our deck, especially here since we do play kind of a lower count of psychic energy than other Malamar decks of Radiant Forest is going to come in handy here. But then also too, we play one copy of Shrine of Punishment. We have absolutely no GXs in the deck, so we do get value out of this card. Uh, the one damage counter in particular can be important sometimes, especially against 190 HP basics like Zera Aura and Buzzwell, just as an example. Also, if it goes unchecked and you know remains in play for a turn or so, you can even set up math on stage two GXs and even tag teams as well. So it's gonna be a pretty important damage modifier. Uh, that we're going to have access to throughout the course of a game. And I believe that's going to be it for our trainer cards. Just to round out the list, four double color synergies and six psychic energies. Like I kind of mentioned, we don't really need as many as normal Malamar decks. We only really need a one at a time on Aerodactyls. You know, I think at most you'll probably have like three to four energies in play. You know, if you have two Aerodactyls, that's going to be two energy. Then maybe if you have a Giratina, you might have one kind of lingering there. So uh, six isn't even, I think, necessary, but you need a somewhat thick count just to ensure that you can draw into them when you need them and get them in the discard pile as quick as possible. But yeah, guys, that is going to be our list that we're going to be trying out here for Aerodactyl. Uh, like I said, big shout out to Chris Campbell for suggesting this deck and try to keep those uh, changes in mind. Like I said, if you do want to play this going forward, I do think you might want to play some physical switching cards, but uh, I'll quit rambling. Let's head into some games and we'll show off how this thing is going to look in action. Alright guys, we're booting ourselves up a game here. Looks like based on the coin and deck box, this is probably going to be some sort of like Zapdos deck or Pikachu Zekrom. Uh, basically something with Zapdos, I'm assuming. <laughs> 
Uh, but even still, you, you don't really know sometimes what you're playing against just because uh, Zapdos can be paired with a number of different things. So we'll have to see what our opponent has. Okay, that doesn't tell us too much. They do play uh, Aether Paradise Conservation Area. That is something worth pointing out. We might have to be on the lookout for that. And our opponent's going to start with Marshadow. Definitely not their ideal starter. But at the very least for us, we will not get let loose. And our opponent is going to get down a Zapdos. Still doesn't really tell us too much though, just because like I said, uh, this could really be anything. This could be Zapdos Jolteon. This could be like Zapdos Buzzwell Shrine. This could be like Pikachu Zekrom that plays like a couple of Zapdos. So we'll have to see what type of lightning variant this is going to be in particular. And there it is. There's the dreaded Absol I was talking about earlier. So that is definitely going to be an annoyance for us. So here we'll Acrobike first, and that's a little bit unfortunate. I uh, usually want both of those, but um, it's fine. I think we need a draw supporter here more than Cynthia. So here we'll definitely get rid of the Psychic Energy, and I guess we'll get rid of the the uh, DCE. Kind of want to keep the Stadium just in case they are playing like a thick count of Aether Paradise. So we want to be able to bump those whenever we need need to do so. So here we can also treasure and we can get... I guess we'll get rid of the Shrine. We still have the Viridian Forest. It is kind of unfortunate, but um, they haven't played any GXs, so this even could just be like a more Zapdos heavy deck. Uh, so that's what we're kind of banking on here. And we're going to put down that DCE and just pass, unfortunately. So if our opponent has a Guzma and knocks out this fossil, we're actually going to be in pretty bad shape, I think. And unfortunately, our opponent does have Guzma. Oh, but they are going to go for Inke. That's actually pretty huge. Um, it, you know, typically against Malamar decks, it is a good idea to target down those NKs very early on. Just because, especially in the case of something like Ultra Necrozma, they need those cards to ensure they can keep attacking, but we have a pretty constant, like, uh, you know, attack. You know, we don't have energies being flooded and, and, you know, being lost from the field every turn. So I think just targeting down our fossil would have been a much better play. So here you can see our opponents definitely getting punished for that. We are going to find everything we need for the Aerodactyl and take a knockout. So I definitely feel pretty good about that. Our opponent will probably probably learn their lesson after that one, I think. Uh, but like I said, it is a pretty reasonable uh, thing to do. Normally you do want to target down NKs, but they probably just didn't know our deck was so maybe heavily focused around Aerodactyl. They do find another Zapdos. Now, the good thing that we do have going for us is that we actually can't be hit for weakness, even though we are weak to lightning. Just because Zapdos' attack does not hit for weakness. But if they can set up this Zera Aura, that could be annoying for us. Okay, so they are going to promote the Zapdos. Do they have the energy they need? Okay, we're gonna see Alicia. Okay, so they can grab Thunder Mountain and attack for free that way. That'll be fine. Huh. Very interesting. They're going for energy switch here. I'm not sure if I really like that. If you have the Thunder Mountain, why not just play it? Yeah, I can't say I really like that play at all there, but you know, I can't see my opponent's hand. Maybe there's something they're going to be going for next turn. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see how it's going to play out here. But either way, this is going to allow us to kind of jump ahead in the prize race a little bit here. And we do have an Acrobike. Let's see. Okay, what do we have? Well, we don't have a Fossil in play, but we could still take the Aerodactyl. We have a Guzma in hand already. And what do we do? What do we do? We know they have the Thunder Mountain stuff, so we could play Mars Shadow, but I'm not too worried about We have the Viridian Force to counter the stadium if we need to. So, yeah, we're definitely gonna get rid of Mars Shadow. Just thinking, what else do we get rid of here? Um, I kind of want to keep Guzma, but at the same time, like, the only reason I want to keep Guzma here is because of this Absol. It's going to make our 
our plays a lot harder. So we're gonna hang on to that. And we're gonna go for Ditto here. So I wanna kind of be able to threaten another Aerodactyl on the following turn potentially. Or you know, we could actually go for, we could go for Malamar here because this Giratina is in play. We could potentially start stacking energy on that. I kind of like that idea as well. Hmm. It's definitely a tricky situation to be in here. But I, I think I like the Malamar here. Just because I think this will be easier to get this Giratina up and attacking next turn. If our Aerodactyl does go down. Than another Aerodactyl. Because right now we can, we can basically live off our hand and find a way to attack with Giratina. And here we're just going to do Fossil Fangs, taking another Zapdos down. And starting to pull ahead in the prize trade a little bit here. So our opponent is going to promote this Marshall. We'll have to see what they're going to do this turn. I'd imagine we'll see that Thunder Mountain and Tapakoko Prism Star uh, finally come into play. What I kind of wish I would have seen them do last turn is put down the Thunder Mountain attack for free with that Zapdos. And then energy switch that energy from the Absol to the Zera Aura and use Tapu Koko to get a second energy on Zera Aura. That way they can attack for free the following turn thanks to that Thunder Mountain. I think I would have preferred that. But maybe they still have a way to attack in their hand. Oh, but just, just to pass, okay. Uh, I am fine with that. So, yeah, I think we're in plenty good shape here. So we could Guzma, but honestly, I don't even think we really need to. Um, I'm fine to just Lily. I'm, I really don't want to get rid of too much else here. So we can... Yeah, we'll put down the Psychic Energy. I am half tempted to put down Viridian Forest and discard the, the Psychic to find another one. But we do have to remember they do have that Thunder Mountain in hand. So I want to hang on to our Stadium if possible. So yet again, going to knock out this Marshall. Now if we can knock out that Absol, that would actually be pretty nice. We do have that Guzma in hand. But we'll have to see what our opponent's going to do. Uh, they are going to get down their energy on Zero Aura. We'll probably see them throw down the Thunder Mountain. Okay. But they're going to go for the energy switch instead. Very interesting. And we're just going to see a Plasma Fist. I'm really curious why they are not making use of Thunder Mountain here. So, anyways, we're just going to promote this Jirachi. And we can actually knock out this Absol, which has kind of been a pain for us up until this point. So here we can Stellar Wish. We can, nice, so we found a or almost said mysterious fossil, unidentified fossil, that's going to be big for the following turn. So what we can do here is we can bench that, we can accelerate in energy uh, to the Giratina, and Guzma up this Absol, and take a knockout on that, while also still attaching another energy to this fossil in the same turn, threatening an Aerodactyl for the next turn. So yeah, we just do that knock that thing out it does have resistance to us but even still we are going to be one-shotting it so here we can do shadow impact taking a knockout and just trying to think where we put our four damage counters i think jirachi seems good here i think there is a case to be made to just put it on giratina since it's going to be knocked out but the reason i'm not is just in case they do have another zap dose i don't really want to make it easy on them to attack us with that i want to just knock this zero or out on the next turn and kind of call it a day. So we're just going to need to find ourselves a choice band and we're going to be in good shape. So here we can finally promote Jirachi, start getting some really good value out of Stellar Wish now that this Absol has been removed from play. So here we'll get down that DCE. And just trying to think, what do we, what do, we do here? Like, if we are confident that we can get the the choice ban, we just Ultra Ball this stuff away and say, screw it, we're going to find what we need this turn. But let's double check, what do we have in deck? Oh, we only have one choice ban at our disposal. So that could, put, could be a little annoying, but our deck really isn't even that thick because we can play this Cynthia, get a fresh hand of six, then dig up. Oh, but then we just get the victory screen. And honestly, I think it's for the best. We are having a pretty... Uh, we were in a good spot. I think our opponent misplayed a little bit here and there, and as a result, that game wasn't too back and forth. So let's uh, hop into another one here and see what we can make happen. And unfortunately, we do mulligan, but that actually kind of happens uh, a little bit regularly with this deck, since you have to remember Unidentified Fossil is not an actual basic 
when it's in your hand. But the good news is that it does help us start Jirachi a little bit more consistently. And here you can see we actually did that. We have a skateboard in hand ready to go. That's actually super, super good. So I do have to say I like this hand. And okay, this is interesting. It looks like we're playing against the like Raichu GX Nuzzle type of deck. Uh, we actually did cover this deck on the channel earlier this week as well. So if you guys want to see Raichu GX, I will have a link down below in the description if you guys want to check that deck out as well. So let's see how this is going to go. But I think on paper, we are going to be a little bit favored here. Uh, just because even if they start attacking with Raichu and one-shotting us, you know, they're getting one prize, whereas we're going to get two every time we attack into Raichu. And nice, we get Ditto. That's actually super big here. So just trying to think, do we go for Stellar Wish before we go for a support? About, I, think, I think I want to. Okay, we do find Viridian Forest. That's fine with me. Now, we could opt to save it, but at the same time, our opponent does play a lot of basic lightning, so our opponent probably won't even get that much value out of it here. And nice, we do find ourselves an Inke that's really, really good here as well. So, I have to say I do like this turn, then we can also end it by discarding a Psychic Energy. Just taking a peek through our deck, we do have our Shrine in there, that's good. We have both choice bands, also very, very important here. And then from there, I think we just pass. And I'm really happy this we're going against this deck because our Jirachi is in no danger of being knocked out since they're going to take usually one to two turns to use Snuggly Generator to get set up. That's, of course, that attack on Pachirisu. It's going to allow them to search their deck for a Lightning Energy and attach it to each of their bench Pokemon with Nuzzle. And as you can probably imagine, everything in their deck has Nuzzle. So it's basically a free, like, plus 100 for Raichu whenever they use this attack. And here we're going to see them use Looker. Yeah, from there, I really don't know what else they need. They're just going to go for the Pachirisu, start getting some energy into play. Fine by me. Now, on our turn, what we want, we have Aerodactyl, so of course we want to find a DCE. Um, you know, we can still attack even without DCE because we do have uh, Psychic Energies in the discard pile already, but... So here we can get down a Psychic Energy, we can discard the other Psychic, uh, put it in the discard pile. Even though it's just going to go back into the deck, I still wanted to make use of Radiant Forest while we had an actual Energy in hand. Okay, um, let's see what we get off the Sacrobike. That is definitely not good. I kind of want both of these cards here. I guess we can... Yeah, it's kind of like a coin toss. I really don't know which is going to be better here. Maybe actually Aerodactyl is better. I think I may have misplayed this game. Or maybe it was another game I'm thinking of. But uh, I do actually remember I do misplay this game. And not on the Acrobike. There are a couple things in here uh, I'll try to point out um, that I do remember making the mistake of. But here I am just going to go for this Marsh. Our opponent has a pretty thick hand at this point. So I want to kind of... Take a knockout on this Pachirisu and also put him down at a low hand size at the same time. And that hand is trash. Uh, now, we want to find ourselves another unidentified fossil. That's going to be the big thing here. And, okay, nice. That is definitely going to be good for us. So, even though we are not going to have a supporter in hand, if they knock out our Aerodactyl, we just promote Jirachi, which can find us potentially a supporter anyways. And if they knock out Jirachi, well, our Aerodactyl is still going to be in play, knocking on their door. So I think this is great for us, actually. And here we find an Energy. So our opponent is going to confidently promote their Pikachu. That tells me they are going to have a way to get Raichu GX into play this turn. Probably knock us out. But like I said, guys, I'm really not too worried about that. We trade very, very well with this deck. Uh, every time they knock us out, they're getting one prize, whereas we're going to be getting two. All we have to do is make sure that we can find ourselves a, um, a choice band in the process. That's going to be the uh, key component here. So our opponent is going to get rid of a Nest Ball. Okay.
And let's see, do they have the Raichu? Okay, well, we have to wait on them to look at first. But like I said, I'm assuming they have it if they promote Pikachu instead of Amolga. And yeah, they have the Pokemon communication. So Raichu GX is going to finally come out to play and start knocking on our door with that powerful Spark attack. It's 20 plus 20 for every uh, Lightning Energy they have in play. And we're also weak to Lightning, so we are definitely <laughs> going to be knocked out here. So yeah, uh, just a, a little 320 damage, no big deal. <laughs> So here we definitely want to find ourselves a choice band. So we can go for a Stellar Wish if we want. Yeah. Gonna do that. All of our energy is in deck or in hand, so we couldn't even make use of Radiant Forest first. So we'll get down another Mysterious Treasure. We can Psychic Recharge, and we can attack with Aerodactyl. And I do remember messing this up this turn. Uh, in hindsight, I actually think attacking with Mars Shadow would have been the play here just because we can't one shot this this Raichu and basically we're going to lose an Aerodactyl and then keep a Marsh Shadow when we knock out this Raichu GX and we would really prefer it to be the other way around we want to ping them for 30 with the Marsh Shadow and then let that thing get knocked out and then we finish it off with Aerodactyl I think that's definitely and okay so yeah so this is we're definitely getting punished very hard for that. It, it, like, it, this wasn't like a terrible misplay, but I definitely think it was a suboptimal play attacking with the Aerodactyl. We had to go for the two shot either way, and we just chose the wrong attacker, um, or the most op. We chose the wrong, like, most optimal attacker for the situation. And yeah, and that's what happens. <laughs> so here we can Stellar Wish, and we do find ourselves a Lily. Unfortunately, we don't have Aerodactyl now. Um, but maybe we can still find ourselves a choice ban and Aerodactyl this way. So here we can... We'll get down the... Escape board, and yeah, I even do this again, too. I'm like, you know what? I'm, like, confident I'm going to get exactly what I need off this Lily. Which I don't, but we do have the Shrine of Punishment. But here, like I said, I definitely think, even in this case, I should have attacked with... Uh, the Mars Shadow. But now the silver lining here is we do have Shrine of Punishment and this actually can be really big if our opponent does not bump the stadium. Because what we can do is uh, we can attack for 180. It'll be 190 going into their turn. If they don't bump the stadium, it'll be 200. And if we can Guzma and take a knockout, we can actually knock out Raichu and something else at the same time. So we'll have to see if we can make something cool happen out of these like kind of sloppy plays I've been doing in this game. Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, even still, I think we're in an okay spot. Uh, we're still putting on pressure. Even if we get knocked out here, we can tie the, pri the prize trade on the following turn regardless. So we're still pretty much neck and neck with this Raichu deck. Uh, but our opponent does have a pretty thick hand here. Like I said, if they can't find a way to bump the stadium we're going to be in good shape but if they do it might be bad for us so what do they have please don't tell me they play super scoop ups okay <laughs> uh we saw the ace roll so anything could have happened at that point so they're just going to knock out our raichu that is fine with me and oh that is that is such a godly top deck <laughs> Uh, so here, I guess we can just go for... I guess we just go for Cynthia. I really don't think it matters too much. Now, unfortunately, we don't have an Aerodactyl, so we might just have to Cynthia. Or, you know what? We could even... We can... Hmm... Yeah, we still just go for Guzma, and we're going to soften up this Pikachu. And this actually, I think this will be nice because we can do 30, and even if our opponent has the Raichu GX to uh, evolve it into it, we don't even need Choice Band to take a return KO on it. So our opponent has an absolutely massive hand here. Uh, they do have Wishful Baton. Do they have another Raichu GX? That's going to be the big thing they're going to be looking for here. So, oh, we're going to see a Brock's Grit, okay. So I guess it kind of makes sense. They can get back a bunch of energy. They can get Pokemon. They can just immediately search out the Pokemon with the Amolga. So 
Kind of makes sense, I suppose. So they are going to go for a Pikachu. So maybe they have a Pokemon communication hand. I think that's what happened in this game, if I remember correctly. Going to search out a Pachirisu as well. So I imagine we'll probably see the Pikachu come on the bench. And communication, the Pachirisu, that seems like a reasonable play. Yep, so that seems good. Uh, that way they can preserve that attacker in the form of their Pikachu. But now we have to just find a way to power up this Aerodactyl this turn. So our opponent's going to go down two prizes. Fine with me. We basically have to knock out this Raichu, though. Otherwise, we're going to be in pretty terrible shape. So we can Acrobike. We can... I guess we keep the Guzma here. We don't really need more than two Malamars, probably. And actually, this is going to be our last Aerodactyl as well. So we're going to have to find Giratina probably at some point to close out this game. So we're going to put down our Aerodactyl here. We're going to... We'll just Cynthia. And okay, this is looking a bit rough. We're going to Acrobike in. Nice, we do hit double color synergy. That was pretty, pretty big. Uh, maybe we should have actually treasured first. That actually would have been a better play. So I don't know what it is, guys. This game I am playing a little bit sloppy, but hey... I guess it happens sometimes. So here we'll go for a Psychic Recharge. Get down that energy on uh, Malam or on Aerodactyl. We'll treasure away this Erica. I guess we can grab the Malamar. Just to thin out the deck. Let's see what we have. I guess we'll fail it. So yeah, I don't know what, what got into me. I just decided to play this game. I was like, you know what? I'm going to play bad. <laughs> so we're going to... Just uh, start powering up a Malmore. Oh, now I do remember why. Uh, because we're going to draw some cards. We're going to draw two prizes. And we're also going to use Stellar Guidance. Or I'm sorry, Stellar Wish here. And if we had that Malamar in hand, between all those things, we might not be able to play the Erica on our following turn. So I was just thinking, uh, we'll leave it in the deck. We don't have many cards left in deck anyway. So Okay, so maybe that actually wasn't a terrible play um, compared to some of the other things I did in this game. Uh, but here we are just going to go for Fossil Fangs. And so we're actually in a cool spot because even if we don't find ourselves an attacker like Aerodactyl or Giratina, we can actually just Guzma up an Emolga potentially and take the game that way as well. So here we do find Giratina, so that's fine. And let's see, does our opponent have another Raichu? That's going to be the first thing. Uh, afterwards is when we are going to... Okay, they do have Raichu. That is going to be an issue for us. We need Guzma, basically. We can't really afford not to have it at this point. So, I'm really not sure what our opponent can do. Oh, they're going to go for a Wick. Very interesting. This card we definitely don't see too often. That actually kind of helps us. That helps us find a Guzma, maybe. And we do get it, so... Thank you very much, Jack2494. That wick actually really helped us out there. But, I mean, our deck's really not even that big anyway, so I think between the five cards we had and the Jirachi, we had decent odds of finding our Guzma. So I'm really not sure what they could do to prevent this at this point. They're going to go for a Sky Pillar. Doesn't really matter too much. Uh, we can just accelerate two energies onto this Malamar and take the game at this point. So here, I guess we can still go through the motions, play that. Let's see, we have one... No, we have all of our energy <laughs> in the discard pile. So here, we're just going to go for our Malamars. Going to power this thing up. That way we can Guzma, one of these Molgas, and take the game. Pretty close game, actually, against this Raichu. I think whiffing those couple of cards in like the early game... Uh, kind of sets back a little bit in conjunction with some of my like kind of sloppy misplays. But anyways, we still get the victory screen anyway, so uh, I guess I didn't get too punished for playing a little bad in that game. But I apologize about that one, guys. But nevertheless, we still won. Uh, but let's hop into one more and see what we can make happen. Now, we do lose the coin flip. A little bit annoying, especially because we don't have a great like first turn attacker or anything in this deck. But we do start with Ditto. That's not too bad. 
means we don't have to find a fossil. We probably still should just because Ditto only has 40 HP, but nevertheless, always nice to find our Ditto early on. And okay, so we're going into Waylord, or Magikarp Waylord to be specific. So we'll have to see, is this going to be like Blastoise? Is it going to be like Quagsire, Naganadal? So we're going to see Tapu Lele, okay. This leads me to believe it's probably like the Quagsire Naganadal version, if I had to guess then. Just because with the like Blastoise version, you typically don't want to play too many like other non-essential Pokemon. That way you can start Articuno. Here we're going to see a treasure, so yeah, this is most definitely going to be the Naganadal version. I have to say, I think we're going to be in a decent spot. I mean, we are going to have to two-shot these tag teams, but even still, I think we're going to trade just a little too efficiently for them to probably pull this one out, if I had to guess. Okay, we're going to see a Wooper, so maybe our opponent should just go, like, aggro Quagsire. If they have, if they have the means to just attack with Quagsires the whole game, I think they just win that way, and then go for, like, a big towering splash at the end of the game to maybe try to get some extra prizes. That would be my best guess. So the fact that they have Magikarp Wayward is actually a little bit threatening uh, because of Towering Splash, because Malamar can be knocked out, Jirachi can be knocked out. So we do have to kind of be careful about how many of these like Jirachis and things like that that we put down here. So here we can put down a Skateboard. We I think I actually want to... You know, we could go for Ultra Ball here, but I'm going to save it just to ensure we can get down another basic. Okay, so here we're going to go for Stellar Wish. And nice, we actually find ourselves a unidentified fossil. That's pretty big for us, I think. Or we could go for Treasure and just get an NK. I think either way is completely fine. But we have the flexibility right now of evolving this Ditto into anything we want. We could also go for Ultra Ball here. Just try to think, what do we actually want to get rid of? That's the question. Get rid of Lily. It's not too great at this point. And maybe even Malamar. Like, as weird as that is, just because we only really need two Malamars throughout the course of this game. Usually one gets the job done, but i just really paranoid about getting rid of too many draw supporters that turn. So our opponent's going to go for a Cynthia. Let's see what they can find themselves. Now, luckily, they did start with this Magikarp Waylord GX because it does have a four retreat cost. So it's going to be a little bit problematic for them to actually move out of play. And then also it has pretty hefty attack costs. So it's actually a really bad starter for them and might allow us to turn to uh, attack into it before it really gets going. Okay, so we're in a spot where we basically, I think, need to... We need to be able to attack into this tag team this turn. Because they're threatening a Super Splash, I believe it is, on their next turn. So here we're going to find ourselves a Mysterious Treasure. Uh, we could go for Choice Band as well, but either way we have to, like... Because I'm just thinking, if we go for Choice Band, we could, theoretically, with Shrine, eventually pick off this Magikarp Waylord with just, like, extra damage that way. That doesn't seem that great to me, but I think it's probably more important we go for the treasure here. Uh, we just really need to ensure we find both of our evolutions. And we will play Erica. Alright, so we can play the treasure. And sure, a Malamar, so we can get rid of a Psychic Energy. That seems fine. We'll find ourselves a Malamar. And we have Acrobike. And nice, we do find Aerodactyl. That's actually pretty huge for us here. Now we can safely attack. We can power this thing up with Malamar and swing for 180 here. So, threatening the two-shot on this thing. And I think we really needed to attack this turn because had they had no damage next turn, they'd be threatening a Towering Splash GX with this same Magikarp Waylord. And so now we are, I think, eliminating that option for them, which is going to be really important. We desperately need to protect our bench uh, against Magikarp Waylord here. So if we're just going to like trade like traditional knockouts other than with the GX attack, like I said, I, 
I do think we are going to be favored here. So we're seeing a nest ball. What are they actually going to find? They could go for another Poipole. Could go for a, another Wooper. I think either of those options would be fine. Um, if they play two Magikarp Waylords, they could maybe start trying to set up one on the bench. I do think that is an option as well. Oh, okay, going to go for Eevee Snorlax. Very interesting. All right, yeah, so they definitely can knock us out with that thing as well, but I'm really not too worried about it. I'm much more concerned with this Magikarp Wayward, and they just had the pass, so uh, I definitely don't mind the three prizes that we can get from this thing. We can, I guess, put down the skateboard. I don't think the math is going to matter too much here. And we're going to put down another fossil, even though we don't really need it right this second. We can always discard it if we change our mind about it later. So here we'll evolve into Aerodactyl. Get down another energy. So yeah, guys, I think we're going to be in good shape. We've kind of, I think, survived the point that really was the most threatening in this match. Now, maybe maybe I've spoken too soon. I, I, I could be wrong here because Towering Splash definitely could wreck our deck. But... uh. I'm kind of like in the spot that we're going to be in here. Cause, okay, and our opponent's just going to promote this E Storm because I'm fine with this. We're basically, you know, they're going to knock us out. That's fine and dandy. Next turn, we're going to do 180, and then we're just one Guzma away from winning. Now, the only scary thing is if they do find another Waylord, then... Okay, but they're just going to get down Poipole, so that's actually fine. I'm just going to say if they found themselves another Waylord tag team, they could still threaten, like if they take one knockout here, they can actually potentially take five prizes if we bench something else that has less than 100 HP. So the fact that they filled their bench with our Poipole actually I think kind of seals this game for us. Or at the very least ensures that we can safely bench additional Pokemon after the Cerodactyl goes down. So here we'll see Water Energy come down on Nognadal and just knock us out with Dump Truck Press. Alrighty, so what do we do this turn? We definitely put down Shrine of Punishment. Um, I don't think it's going to change the math too much, but nevertheless, it could enable some weird play where we can knock out the CV Snorlax with uh, Shrine of Punishment damage somehow. So here we'll get rid of Choice Band and a Psychic Energy. We can... I guess we can grab another Malamar. That'd be fine, I suppose. Yeah, because we have the Ditto. We can just evolve that. Okay, Aerodactyl's fine too, because we. I guess we don't need too much energy this turn. Yeah, because we only need one energy on this Aerodactyl at a time, so... Here, we'll treasure away the forest. We don't want them to have access to that. And yeah, we can still make use of this Malamar that way too. So, had to kind of like pick our targets very specifically there with the uh, with Ultra Ball because we can get Aerodactyl with that, whereas we can't get it with Treasure, so we kind of had to make sure we pick the right Pokemon with each. But here we're just going to go for a Cynthia. And okay, yep, this seems pretty good. I still feel pretty confident about the position we're going to be in. We're just a Guzma away from winning at this point. So here we can go for a second recharge again. And we'll Stellar Wish. Uh, we'll go for Acrobike. That way we can potentially find ourselves a Guzma for next turn. And let's see. Just check and see what all we've used. And yeah, we'll just retreat into... Sure, we'll do this Aerodactyl. And attach down there. Actually, yeah, this is probably... It probably doesn't matter, but... Technically, I think we should have attacked with the other Aerodactyl and put Choice Band on it. Because then that would have gotten us closer to Shrine of Punishment damage knocking it out. So that technically would have been correct. So Aerodactyl has not been my friend in terms of my best plays on PTCGO. <laughs> so this is a good video series on how to not play this deck, as you guys have been seeing throughout these games. Game 1, I didn't do too bad, though. But games 2 and 3, I think I should have done a couple small things a little bit differently. Uh, but here we are going to see an Erika's from our opponent. And I'm still just not sure what they even would want. 
If they play Acerola, they are definitely going to need that. But if they don't have it, then I feel pretty good about our chances here. And here they are going to start going Aggro Quagsire. I think they went... Uh, they were just a little too late with this. I think they should have started this a little bit sooner in the matchup. So no doubt they're probably going to find themselves another Naganatal here because they're going to want to try to keep that energy in play because they're going to lose three this turn or on... Or in theory, they're going to lose three energy on my next turn if this Quagsire gets knocked out. So they want to make sure they can keep enough energy to keep attacking every turn in play. But ideally, we're just going to find Guzma and win. <laughs> So we are going to see that washout ability. They're going to do 60 plus 20 for every energy on the Quagsire, which is going to knock us out in this case. So the fact that Aerodactyl had 130 HP was actually pretty big there as well, because that committed basically all of the, their energy uh, to this Quagsire. But here we get Giratina. I don't even think we have another target for Girat or for Monsieur's Treasure in deck. Okay, we actually do have one Inke left. And do we have three Guzmas? Yeah, we actually have all of our Guzmas left. So I think what we do here, we go for Acrobike first. Um, yeah, we'll just go for the DCE, that's fine. Thin those cards out, and then hopefully we can find Guzma here. And we do. So yeah, we can just Guzma up our, uh, our boy Snorlax back there and take a knockout to win the game. And here our opponent sees the Guzmas and they give us the victory screen. So Aerodactyl, as you can see there, once it kind of dodged the a uh, threat of like a towering splash GX attack. It kind of just bodied that deck from there. But anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this look at Aerodactyl. I don't think it's probably the strongest Malamar variant out there, but it definitely has some cool things going for it. And also too, like I said earlier in the video, a big shout out to Chris Campbell and the rest of our patrons over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. If you guys can support this channel by becoming a patron, like I mentioned, or even by picking up some merch from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.